the World Wrestling Federation. For over 50 years, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. Woo! Oh, yeah! The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Money isn't everything, it's the only thing. And everyone, everyone has a price for the million dollar man. <laughs> Shove that control into a nosedive, Hulk Hogan. Will you stop? All right, let's go over to Sean Mooney. And what you gonna do when Hulkamania destroy you? Who? Yeah, get ready to freak out, freak out, because it's time for the Retro Roundtable, people. That's right, it is Sunday Segway Presents Retro Roundtable, episode 18. It's your boy, the one man with no Instagram, Kenny Killer, bringing you a nostalgia hit once a month on a Saturday. And you know what that means. It means I'm joined by my partner in crime, none other than the cookie cutter podcaster himself, Mr. Michael Cook. Welcome, everyone. Oh it man, it wasn't as, as gravelly that one. <laughs> it wasn't as gravelly. I think um, usually it's a mixture of you've got a cold and yeah. a northern accent, but you know, you kind of. I think you're. I think you're well this time, so you know, yeah, it's it's all good. I think more raspy voice will kick off in the next month when we start we delve oh. back into the WWE linears, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, so we've got a pack show today, people. Um, Man, we've got loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of people on today. So let me introduce you to um, my fellow brothers, the Segway family, none other than Master of the Top Rope Elbow, Mr. Steve Dawson. Hey, yo. <laughs> uh, also, um, he's coming with his Belmont banter. As always, it's Mr. James Belmont. Straight out of Pigeon Patrol. <laughs> um, also, I think it's a first time for Mr. One, Evan McCabe on the show. <coughs> No, it's not. It's not? No, because I did um, uh, Summer of Slam uh, 93. That's the one. I stand corrected. <laughs> Either way, we have McCabe back on the show. We love to have this guy on for obvious reasons because he is one of the great podcasters we love to have on. So, McCabe, welcome back on the show. Yay, thank you for having me back. <laughs> um, also, last but definitely not least, it is the one Butcher69. It is Dave Gillam. Good morning, my brother. I love bread, as always. <laughs> Have you got something for us, McCabe, as well? Um, I like turtles. I've already done that one. <laughs> <laughs> Have to roll it off the list. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Well, if we, as always, I mean, we're, we're trying to bring the banter as we do. So, Cookie, what have we got today? Because it's the last time we delve into pop culture. Yeah, we're going for 80s and 90s movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, Very really, 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 really tough to get this into five separate categories. Uh, uh, Belmont, did you have problems? What, well, making a list? It's yeah. impossible. I can't, oh, <laughs> McCabe, what about you? Was it very easy? Oh, God. I'm, I'm looking at this list right now, and I'm literally going to have to edit it down as we as we go on. Oh, man, it's so hard. I mean, Gillam, man, you was... You was pushing to you. get on this <laughs> you was pushing to get on this so when i made the changes last night i i i like the message you sent me <laughs> so hard so hard oh. honestly and steve man it's been a hot minute trying to get you on this pop culture show for a while and now finally you've got a saturday off mate yeah i was i was, I was meant to be on last two for the um the 90s cartoons and the 90s um games with the 90s games one i was meant to be on on the saturday and on friday my boss called up and said oh can you work in in um in, in um, another shop, so I had to take that to take the money. Had to take the money. Obviously, man. I love being on the oh, podcast. Yeah. Straight million dollar man out here. We got we got to get chase the paper, man. We got to <laughs> chase the paper. Um, either way, let's get on with the show. Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. Make sure you check out our website. That is Sunday Segway Podcast. <laughs> Wix com forward slash Sunday Segway. Also, uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter. It's at Sunday Segway. You can follow me at Kenny Killer. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Um, listen to us on iTunes, Podomatic Stitcher. Don't forget to download that double tis player. Player. So, top 80s and 90s films. So each of the guys have five, a top five for each year. Um, so this was hard, very hard. Um, so we're just going to kick off with it. So, um, Cookie, please give me your top five uh, with a little bit of explanation. Why um, on each movie, please? Right. First up, 
Masters of the Universe. <laughs> oh, how did I forget that one? Uh, oh, Dolph Lundgren as <laughs> He-Man. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, brilliant. Oh, good. And, and Frank Langella as Skeletor. Oh. I only just found out when I logged on today. He was Nixon in Frost Nixon. Stop it. I didn't what? have a clue. I didn't have a clue. When you, when I was just see the picture now. I was like, oh, Nixon. <laughs> the, two, the two great movie roles, Skeletor and Richard Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. And just, just a, a great film that deserved a bigger budget, which it didn't get. That's why I think that's why it was set on Earth. Mm-hmm. I, think, so, I, I, I think everyone collectively just went nuts when this movie came out just because of obviously a cartoon. And then you're yeah. like, wait a minute, all of a sudden you've got a movie of this. Everyone's running to the cinema, mate. Yeah, and they're just fighting in the school hall. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, if you look at Thor now, mm. that that that's that's the he that's the that should be the He-Man movie. That that's yeah. how, how good that was. Uh, ne- next up, um, one of my favourite Bill Murray films, Scrooged. <laughs> I love this film, uh, and and is bas- is basically just a dick <laughs> until 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 he's oh, Bill Murray. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, and just and just at the end with that tiny Tim character basically says, yeah, "God bless us, everyone. If you don't cry, there's something wrong with you." <laughs> 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 oh God! Uh, next up, uh, this is the hardest top three. Uh, I've got just got to go on how many times I've watched it. Mm-hmm. So the next up is uh, Ghostbusters. Okay. Um, and I'm not thinking of the future of these women doing Ghostbusters. That's no, don't, out- don't get me started on that. Oh, don't. It's an out- don't outrage. Don't get me started on that. It doesn't exist. <laughs> Blasphemy! <laughs> Nobody Still wants this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just a uh, brilliant, brilliant film. Um, and the next one, The Labyrinth. Oh, yeah. Um, Bowie! <laughs> it was so close to being number one, but I had to go... Number two, Labyrinth. Which is the two. one? Which is the one with Tom Cruise? I always get you mixed up. Oh, that was oh. Okay, legend. That's legend. legend. That's with that, one, one, yeah. with that mm. bloody red devil thing, man. Oh, oh god, freaked me out as a kid. <laughs> and number one from 1989, Batman. Oh. I don't know how many times <laughs> I've watched this. I've done essays on it. <laughs> I've done pre- I've done presentations <laughs> on it at college. I friggin' love this film, and because everybody was expecting it to be <coughs> the sixties Batman, and and folk were going, "What? It's, it's a 15? <laughs> what?" So, and Jack Nicholson, one of my favourite actors as the Joker, was absolutely brilliant. Great, great film, and uh, I'm just a fan of Tim Burton, the mm-hmm. the director. And uh, Danny Elfman doing the music, who also does the music to The Simpsons. It's a brilliant, brilliant film. That's a nice, that's a nice 80s top five. That's not, that's a nice coverage of five movies, which I think we're going to get definitely a wide scope. Definitely with mine, a lot oh, of people damn. might be surprised. <laughs> but um, Steve, let's get let's kick off with yours, mate. Give us your top five. Okay, top five 80s. These are I, I don't think I could ever put these in an order. So these are like in no particular order. Um, first off, we've got, um, in my opinion, the greatest comedy movie ever made, Airplane. Oh, yes. <laughs> nice. I mean, I actually, look, I was, when I was researching that, I, I looked on um, IMDb, and apparently this is, this movie averages out as, as a joke every 21 seconds. <laughs> yeah. the, the amount of jokes in this film is just, <laughs> it's just there's jokes for everyone. I mean, I, I, I watched it um, the, a few days ago. And just like as, as research for this, I, I must have seen this over about 50 times. I spotted a, a new a new joke I'd never seen before. Oh, stop it! <laughs> it's just oh, it's got everything. It's got Leslie Nielsen in it, so it's just slapstick. Everyone wins. Everyone wins. <laughs> uh, next up, another comedy coming to America. Oh, dude. Oh. <laughs> yes, thank you. Iconic. Oh dear, just back just back when Ed, back when um, Eddie Murphy was funny, because these days he's just not. <laughs> Not Jackson. anything now, is he? He's lost it, but he sold out the for 80s, the money. Eddie Murphy played if, him and Arsenio Hall played like six or seven characters each, didn't dude, they? Dude, listen, the, this movie for me, and and I found it so hard not to put it in my top five. It's just the the scene. 
He's like, fuck you, yes, yes, <laughs> That's fuck funny. you too. Fuck you, everyone. And it's just the, the rally bit as well. The rally bit where he just like, set your chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it takes so far to <laughs> oh, oh my please. God. I just, I, every part, every part of it, like yeah. um, the barbershop scene. Uh, just it's yeah, it's 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 am- it's amazing. It's yeah. am- and Soul Glow. Who can listen? That it's was just a- Soul Glow. <laughs> I, can, I can play that shit now. Yeah, I can play that shit now uh, and just like smile like from ear to ear. <laughs> oh dear. Um, ne- next up, we've got um, Goonies. Obvious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Goonies obviously had to put it in there. Tr- the tr- truffle shuffle, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. It was just like. When you watch it, you just wanted to be a goonie and you just wanted to go off and just like go into caves and <coughs> fucking pirate ships and get chased by weird old women. <laughs> weird old women in the cave. Yeah. <laughs> it's too early for this. I need to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> a sip for the working man. <laughs> yeah. Ne- ne- uh, next up, we've got one of Cookie's ones, um, Labyrinth. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. David Bowie. What else can you say? And. Um, my last one, a little bit of a different one. Willow, has anyone heard of Willow? Dude, yeah. dude, oh, yes. Oh, oh. It's Jimmy, can say hi. Willow. I love that movie, dude. I love. Is Val Kilmer in it? Yeah, Val Kilmer and um, Warwick Davies when he was about, I think he was about seventeen when he filmed it. Mm. It was like this, was like before he became famous for like being friends with Ricky Gervais and all that sort of this stuff. This was after the Wookie, wasn't it? This is after he played the Wookie, wasn't it? Um, he was he was an Ewok in Ewok, um, in um, Return of the Jedi, and then he moved on to Willow. Man, <laughs> Willow was it's, again. It's, it was a... it's just like um, the, there's a, there's a big, big battle scene in a castle, and there's like a two headed dragon. Yeah. And when I was like eight years old, that was the best fucking thing I've ever seen. A two headed dragon. <laughs> me and my brother. Brilliant. Me and my brother used to we used to watch this movie religiously. We like. There's two bits we loved when they're when him and Magosh are running through the woods and it's like, come on, you little peck. <laughs> I love that bit. And then there's another bit where um he turns the woman into a sheep, and she's yeah, like, so, yeah, like yeah. Lo, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> we used to love that bit so much. Oh god. Oh. Uh, was that it, uh, Steve? That's my top five. Yeah. Nice, mate. Nice. Put, put you give out some new ones there. Macaber, run with it, my friend. I apologise in advance, but these are the ones. Uh, this is the top five in no particular order that has had the most in- impact on my life in the eighties. Um, starting off randomly, Pinocchio. Yes, man. Pinocchio. This film um, I went to see in the cinema, and it made me cry. Uh, it actually made me scream randomly as well. <laughs> um, and it's also told me not to lie, or else your nose will get massively big. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, no particular order again I've got Lady and the Tramp in there mm-hmm. uh, Lady and Tramp is probably the reason why I'm non-monogamous um, and also why I try to punch above my weight <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no particular order again uh, the third one on my list is Aliens now it has to be Aliens rather than Alien because um, in, I think it was 1987 um I saw the buzz around this and it just made me excited, but when I actually saw the trailer, I shat myself. But um, when I actually watched it, I just it was just a joy to watch from beginning uh, start to finish. Um, in no particular order is Robocop. Mm. Robocop has one of the most memorable um, murdering scenes I've ever seen in my life, and it still scars me to this day. Um, it's it's uh, it's satirical. It's 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 news based. It's got a shitload of drugs in it, and it's just ultra fucking violent and gritty in a really comic kind of way. And I love that. Sounds like and, a bad night uh, in Camden. <laughs> that too, all works up. Mostly works up. Um, and the last one, I've got Commando, which to me... Oh, yes. Oh, how did I say... Forget oh, Macaba, I love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's the original Taken, only that it's for blokes and it's a lot more masculine. And it's <laughs> a Schwarzenegger with two fucking um, light, uh, light machine guns in his arms. It's fucking perfection in my eyes. And that's the kind of thing that made me the fucked up person I am today. <laughs> oh, Makeba, that list was awesome, mate. 
Like, this is awesome. I'm smiling from ear to ear just because it's just bringing back memories, man. Um, mm. Belmont, run with it, my friend. <laughs> I'm going to have to make a couple of the late changes, though. Of, <laughs> Substitution. Yeah. Uh, okay, right, number five. The Colour of Money. Okay. I'm not mm. Scorsese. That wow. is a film that fast to the Felsen. Has anyone seen that here? I haven't. Yeah, I'm on. Oh, you've seen it? Oh, I'm, good. So I'm, I'm, I'm writing it down. I'm writing this down. One of the most underrated films ever. No one talks yeah. about it. It's fantastic. Mm. Colour of Money. Where he takes a new uh, billiards player on his wing, Vincent. He's, he tends to be right prick though. <laughs> it's a good story of them just taking on the old uh, pool halls and stuff, and just getting into some crazy situations. It's a great film. It's great. Um, it's a great film. Number four. So I was going to say Aliens, but it's already been called. So I'm going to sub it for Demolition Man. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. One that? of the best team ups ever. Wesley Snipes and Sylvester Stallone. Mm-hmm. What more do you need? Wait, is Lunch in that one as well? No. No. No, it's just Stallone and Wesley Snipes setting the. It's set in the future time of 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Before they get frozen, I can't, where do they end up? Uh, 20 what was it 2032 or something? I really hope the future doesn't end up. Like, I couldn't handle that. Be well and enhance your calm shit for long. See, I just got a credit now for swearing. <laughs> All right, number three, possibly the best sequel ever made, Terminator 2. Ooh, nice. uh-huh. yeah. I had to get that in before someone else said it. Because I would have been screwed. Wait, wait, was it Terminator in the 90s? That's what I got. That's yeah, what got. Terminator 2 was wait, in the wait. 90s. Terminator, the Terminator first Terminator 1 was 90s. Oh, was yeah. Yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So which yeah. one, which one, what, which, which one you say in Belmont? Terminator 2 or Terminator? Terminator 2. Terminator 2 got to be on your 90s list, mate. Well, oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, well, Terminator, the original Terminator, then. Cool. <laughs> the adjudicator uh, says, ding, ding. All right. It's number two. I have, to, I have to leave it there. Ghostbusters, the original one, not the new one. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> number two, perfect cast, great comedy. It's like it had the good blend of gritty as well. Oh my god. That 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 new no. I'm not fucking talking about that. Nobody wants this. No. Number one. I did. Predator. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Again, phenomenal cast, phenomenal action. You got flipping. <laughs> you got Jesse Ventura in there, Blaine. <laughs> oh my God! The, the, the manliest handshake of all time. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> Dylan, you son of a, son of a bitch! You're so much testosterone in that handshake. <laughs> yes. Mm. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Get the chopper. Get the <laughs> chopper. <laughs> 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 Oh, it's iconic. I know, I know. Oh, nice one, Belmont. Um, I'm looking forward to your nineties list, mate. Um, Gillum, let's go for it, mate. Come on, come on, give it to him. Right. This was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. <laughs> um, right, no, in, in reverse order. Number five. This film, for me, I've had a lot of stick for it over the years. Is Top Gun. Okay. Top Gun was iconic. It, every picture, person that watched this film wanted to be a fighter pilot. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it was just... It, along with the film itself, the soundtrack itself was... Remember when soundtracks used to be great? Mm. Yeah. You know, and, and, and now they're just nah. not very good. <laughs> you know? Um, you could ten songs on on a CD that just you could remember detail for detail what part of the film they were from. You know, this 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 film changed changed the way I looked at things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it was just it was fantastic. It's fantastic. Number four, another film that I was obsessed with the soundtrack, Lost Boys. Yes, mm-hmm. mate. Yes, mate. Was that Corey Feldman? Uh, Corey Feldman, Jason Patrick, Kiefer Sutherland. This film was, for me, it, it was. I remember sitting there one day with me, with my mates, and uh, we were having the odd the odd reefer or two. <laughs> and, <laughs> how, how, how I remember people are strange coming on, and I listened to that many versions of that song, but I still say to this day, the Doors version is the best. Um, wow, wow, what a film! Um, right, 
number three. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> I knew, oh, yeah. I knew, I knew, I yeah. knew he was gonna bust a National Lampoon. I knew it. <laughs> I, 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 do you know what? I, I try to say when I say, when I split all these down, I try to go for every genre. Mm-hmm. You know, do you know what I mean? And National Lampoon's. I, I could have gone for any of the National Lampoon's films, but Christmas Vacation. Just, I, I never get bored of it. Mm. It just it just it just stands out for me as one of them great films that you could put on every day of your life and it just gets funnier and funnier and funnier. It's it's just it's, it's Chevy Chase is just he's he's a living legend. <laughs> oh, he's, yeah. when, I'm not when he, so keen on the new one, like but when he doesn't get his bonus, that's the best <laughs> scene ever. <laughs> This is brilliant how he gets Randy Quaid. Is it Randy Quaid? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, To go and get his boss. And he just brings him in front of him with a ribbon on him. (laughs) (laughs) It's just just, just this brilliance. Number two. I became obsessed with this. He he had a young life. And it's weird because even today his name is symbolic for 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 a person that didn't really do a lot but he was talented as shit River Phoenix mm-hmm. in Stand By Me yeah mm. uh, you know what I mean it was just it, it, Stand By Me was one of these films that you, you, know, you, you were kids and you used to go out on your adventures and there'd always be them group of bigger boys mm. that you'd want to kick the shit out of <laughs> <laughs> but but you were always intimidated by them. Do you know what I mean? They're them boys that sat on the wall. This was Stand By Me. You know what I mean? A bunch of kids that set out on a day-to-day trip, lied to their parents. <laughs> oh, I'm going to sleep in his house. No, you're not really, are you? <laughs> but uh, that that was me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just... Uh, that, and, and Benny King himself doing, you know, that phenomenal song. It's just, I still to this day I just see I just like I said this top five was the hard one of the hardest things I've had to do mm-hmm. number one Al Pacino himself yeah. Scarface okay. oh, oh, oh what film yeah what a film I remember <laughs> <laughs> my my best man who, who when, when I finally get married me and this guy we we've sat so many times and tried to, you know, when you're on a, on a, when you've been on a bender, you've had a few beers in the house, and you've tried to watch the film <laughs> from start to finish. Yeah, and, you never and we always fall asleep, and it's quite symbolic, really, because I said to him one day we, we were sat there watching it, and I said to him, I said, right, we're not going to fall asleep. He said, what do you mean we're not going to fall asleep? I, 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 he says you can't determine that. Like, yes, I can. I said because. <laughs> If we if we get to the point where we're getting tired, we're just gonna make toast. <laughs> mm. I, I said I don't care. He said, yeah, but how the fucking hell are we gonna watch the film if we're making toast? We'll pause it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, the, the Scarface for me was just again soundtrack fantastic. But it was it was the story of you know the American dream as such. Mm-hmm. A guy that came from Cuba or Cuba. Cuba. Hmm. Um, Cuba just, he tried to make a name for himself, but not the honest way. <clears throat> but every person that's watched that film wanted to be Tony Montana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want to play around? Every off? person. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, and, and the late great Frank, Frank Laguerre, Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, and his gosh, little friend, wife, many, man. many. Mm. You know that 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 moment in that film when he when he goes over to the little child sat on the sunbather, and he goes, "Look what he's gonna do there now." <laughs> watch, watch what he does with his tongue. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> a great impression. Of it. <laughs> she slaps him across the face. It's, it's just brilliant. No, oh, that's a great it's impression. What a film! Uh, right, can I make film. a quick correction to my list? All right. Because uh, Evan McKay rightly pointed out, I'm running on four hours sleep, guys. I do apologise. Demolition Man was in the 90s, so I'm moving that over to the other list. Yeah. I'm going to put Rocky in its place. All right. All right. My turn. Here we go. Top five. Right. 
again like everyone else says this is very hard so i'm just gonna go with like mccabe said what meant most to me growing up um and the effect it had on me right number five beverly hills cop 2 oh yeah hey. like yes. this Already movie perfect. like I grew, I, I grew up in the time where I'm like, okay, the sequel was better than the first. I felt was yeah. better than the first one. Like, yeah, I did. I, I And I'm watching this and I'm just thinking, Eddie Murphy is an absolute goon. How can you go into a man's house and just take over a man's house? <laughs> you, just, you just roll up in there and just say, you come to do some shit in the house. You just take out the man's house and you live there now for while you're staying in this. I'm like, what the hell? The guy comes over and infiltrates this city. Man is from Detroit and he is coming over to, to another city and he is running roughshod. I just fucking love it. Fucking um, um, uh, Billy Rosewood, like oh god, it just it was amazing. I loved every single minute of it, and the soundtrack to that as well was, was great. Um, yeah, ma- massive thing for me. Me and my brother again used to just watch this. Like we'd um had Bridget Nielsen in, man. Wow, mm. she was fit. the legs, man. She was the a legs. beast, mate, in this one. Um, right, number four, Goonies. Um, Again, it's just as a kid, it's just iconic uh, movie, you know. You're a kid watching kids going on an adventure like this. You're just like, yo, you know, respect to that one, definitely. Um, I'll move on quickly. Number three, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. <laughs> um, again, as a kid, this freaked me out because, again, didn't know much about the whole Nazis and the whole Holocaust thing. Um, Indiana Jones, um, you know, again, it was just a massive, massive, um, action movie and um, just kind of go through it and then at the, I think the end bit when they opened up the thing and like it just when their faces melt oh dude man that oh, scarred me it. for Terrible. years <laughs> scarred me for absolute years so um, yeah big impact on me right now these next two have the biggest impact on me right um, in growing up of most movies apart from the um, one of my number one in um, num- in the 90s okay Number two is The Breakfast Club, right? Mm. This movie, oh man, it hit me in so many different levels. And especially as I got older and started watching it more and more. Because to think you had five or six, how many how many of there there were, different people from different, um, you know, um, spectrums of the school totem pole in terms of popularity. All had their different problems, come together in detention, and then they all kind of bond. And it's just the realism about it. They're saying we will never be, we will never, you know, um, even interact with each other on a normal day, and how that affects them, you know. And then all of a sudden they're just talking you know, to each other in, uh, in detention and kind of going through this. I just loved it. Emilio Estevez was an absolute beast in this movie. Molly Ringwald as well. Oh man, it just yeah, I, I, it hits me to this day. My number one movie of all uh, um or in the eighties is Rocky Three, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason mm-hmm. for this, the reason for this is just pure and simple. After this movie, you just want to be a boxer. You just want to box, like. After this movie, I'll be running on the street, fucking, you know, like trying to trying to box and stuff, and then the the soundtrack, I have the tiger. And the, the training montage, and you got Mickey dying, and you're just like, oh my god, your heart is fucking like getting torn out with, with Mickey dying, and he just, come on, Mr. T, he sends shivers down Rocky's spine. Rocky just doesn't know what the hell to do. Mr. T, Mr. T in this movie, right, it's Clubber Lang, was an absolute beast. Mm. Especially the bit when he's like calling, he is, it's like fucking busting a promo. He's in there calling out fucking Rocky's missus. He's like, hey woman, hey woman, uh, why don't you take your pretty little self over to my house and I'll show you about a real man. I love that bit. Mm. <laughs> and then when Rocky prevails at the end, you're just like, oh, Rocky, man, you gone and did it, dog. Like, you, you fucking, you just talk about, um, you know, it's just stacked against you and you just pull it out and he's just making him mad. And he just wins, and he has to fucking bring in Apollo Creed. He has to bring in Apollo Creed, like, oh, dude. <laughs> so you just love oh, that bit in that film when the club of Lang goes, "You dead meat," and Rocky goes, "Go for it." Yeah, and the clubber, <laughs> the clubber just looks like, wait, what? 
What do you mean? <laughs> he, he puts his gloves out so they can so they can just meet gloves and club a lag dog. That's the bit. That's the bit. He's just like, I'm gonna bust you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I'm gonna bust. So you yeah, up. you're right. Serious shit goes down there. Film. We got Rocky loses the title. Mickey dies. I was crying. Man. Well, it's no, what paved his way oh, for that, that slot at Mania, wasn't it, against Piper and Hogan? Yeah. Uh, with with Hogan, wasn't it? Don't she have? Don't she have the? No, she has the kid in the second one, in it. Or is it the third one? No. It's, at the end at the end of the first one beginning of the second one wasn't it yeah because uh, she was like all I want yeah, to do is win yeah. and yeah. then that's when the training montage happens dude oh man enough said let's roll on 1990s let's do this We've got 20 minutes cookie roll with it right first up Groundhog Day. An- another, <laughs> yes. another bu- you can tell I'm obsessed by Bill Murray. You love Bill Murray, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. Uh, j- just uh, another good film of his. And similar film to Scrooge, where he starts off as a dick, as I said before, <laughs> and ends up doing the right thing. And, you know, it's all that, all's well, well that ends well. <laughs> uh, another uh, Batman Returns. Uh, I love... Oh, I love this. Michelle Pfeiffer as uh, Catwoman. Mate. Oh, I've, I've, just got a, I've, got a, I've got a sweat on now. Just thinking about <laughs> I'm going to have a yeah. top show after this. So. <laughs> uh, and then next up, uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, yes. Just just for... Just being the first thing. Like The CGI and all that was unbelievable. Uh, next up, nothing to this day touches that. Oh, no. no way! I don't believe it. It, it shows it just... up films today. Yeah, that's it how good it was. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and next one, uh, Wayne's World. <laughs> oh, just, yeah. just, just for the daftness. <laughs> but uh, great, great film. Uh, and uh, Garf follows me on Twitter. I, I've mentioned this hundreds of times, mm-hmm. but Garf <laughs> follows See? me on Twitter. Yeah, oh yeah. Plane to plane. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and uh, number one, uh, because of the lack of spiders, Home Alone two. Uh, yeah. Home Alone can, lack of spiders. Home Alone can piss off. That tarantula, <laughs> that tarantula can go away. <laughs> Home Alone two. I think it's such a good film. And that um, talk boy that he had, I got that for Christmas. Oh, for you I talking used to, to have it. That. As well, yeah. I had the, did anyone have the watch, the talk boy watch? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. It lost about five minutes, yeah. but it was a good, it was a good commodity at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 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 my top five of the nineties. Nice, mate. Nice. All right, here we go, Steve. Okay, these are again in no particular order. First up, we got Dumb and Dumber. Dude. Oh. You just no, melted my heart, mate. That. You just melted my heart, mate. Oh, <laughs> what <a> film? <laughs> Oh dear, we got no food, we got no jobs. We got no water! It's a falling off! (laughs) (laughs) I mean, what else can you say? Jim Carrey at his best. I just, I think stupid stupid humour is my favourite. I just, and this just does it better than anything. I just, I just visualising parts of it now. Yeah, he sat, with the sat on the back of the bike and he, oh just, he just pisses himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's so warm. <laughs> just go, just go, man. With a cop saying, oh, yeah, that was a thanks for asking. Man. Then Lloyd comes over and goes, kill a boot, man. <laughs> <laughs> and the best, the best two, the best two scenes, and my favourite two scenes in this are actually ones that were completely improvised. Do you remember? Do you remember them? The most annoying sound in the world. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was completely improvised. Jim Carrey wasn't meant to do that. And if you if you look very carefully, as he makes the noise, you can see Jeff Daniels absolutely piss himself because he wasn't expecting oh, him to do it. There's a guy's going, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> and also, when um, in the um, bar, when you know when you know when he goes, we landed on the moon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that wasn't, in, that wasn't in, in, in the script either. He just like randomly saw the oh. saw the newspaper on the wall. Looked at it and just came up with that line. We used to we used oh, to laugh please. so much at the bit when he sold the parakeet to the blind kid and he was just like, "Pretty bird, <laughs> pretty bird, party on a cracker." You saw you saw you saw Petey to a blind kid. He had no head. I took care of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, oh no, no! The most iconic line for me is, "Kick his ass, Seabass." <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. You just hawked at your burger, man. <laughs> I love it. Chucks the salt over oh, his dear. shoulder, and he just and he comes over and he looks at me. Which one of you did that? And he just sees that pointing at Jeff Daniels. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh, dear. Oh. Ne- next up, next up, we've got. I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't, <coughs> I couldn't have not have a Disney film, so I've gone for Lion King. Mate, yes. Mm. Thank yes. You. In my opinion, the best thing Disney have ever done. Mm-hmm. I mean, just amazing, amazing songs. Out on John, Circle of Life. The game was brilliant as well. That was going to be on my list if I'd been on the uh, 90s games. Well, that game was a ass. pain in the arse. Sorry? That game is such a pain. It was hard. <laughs> yeah. A mega drive. Those days were dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, next up, one that's already been mentioned, Terminator 2. I mean, Arnie is my favourite actor of all time. I've got, I think I've got every single one of his um, action films on DVD, apart, apart from the most recent Terminator, which I haven't seen yet. But this for movie is just... What else can you say? It's just... Best sequel to me. Yeah. yeah. And another one that's been mentioned, Jurassic Park. I mean, when you when you're a young boy, what, what's what's cooler than dinosaurs? Nothing. Mm. And when this movie came out, you just see these dinosaurs as they as they were back in the day. And the welcome and the, my fa- my favourite movie scene of all time is when um, Richard Attenborough and the two people are in the car and they see the dinosaurs and he goes, "Welcome to Jurassic Park." And then that amazing uh, movie theme just kicks in, mm. and then you see yeah. a wide shot and you see all the dinosaurs. And that 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 scene with my whole childhood, really, mm. my favourite my favourite thing as well. I told my son I was going to take him there, and he shit his pants. He's like, "Can't go there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get eaten." I said, "That's why I'm taking you there." <laughs> what? You don't love me? <laughs> you can't love me. Uh, and last last on my list, a bit of cheese with in with um, Independence Day. Oh, okay. Mm. Epic. Nice. Epic. I mean, and I'm it's looking just forward to the scene. brilliant. It's got aliens in it. It's got the right amount of cheese. It's got one-liners from Will Smith. It's got a. It's got Will Smith punching an alien in the face. <laughs> it's just. It's just brilliant. Jeff Goldblum as well. Yep. This this was proper event cinema. When when I remember when this movie came out, there was so much hype about it, and I just miss that so much about cinema now. Oh man, mate, that's a nice, that's a nice top five nineties, McCabe. Oh, I'm gonna have to change my list a bit. Damn it, sorry, carry on. <laughs> Mc- McCabe, <laughs> that's what I've been doing. I don't give a flying fuck, so I'm gonna keep my list as it is. Yeah. Um, no particular order again. Space Jam. <laughs> oh yes, mate. Oh, yes. Oh, why did I forget, mate? Why did I forget? <laughs> mate, roll credits. We're done here. <laughs> <laughs> Space Jam, mic drop. Um, that film has so many memories to me. Um, some of them bad, uh, particularly the soundtrack. Uh, um, my family, we, um, my mum wanted, I believe, I could fly at uh, my uncle's funeral. Grim, ah. but awesome. But um, the whole, the, just the whole, the the, cult, the, the pop cultural re- references in that film, just the fun in the film, the soundtrack. Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. <laughs> the <favorite films>. <laughs> oh yeah, Murray's <laughs> in there. <laughs> yeah, so I just love this film. Uh, um, no particular order, number four is uh, Terminator 2. Um, everything has been said about this film. Um, the only thing is, um, I actually had the arcade game on my Mega Drive, and uh, looking back now, that was ill advised money paid. Um, no, I'm going to save that one till last. Um, I'm, the top three, Pulp Fiction, mm-hmm. uh, the amount of like shenanigans around this film actually it wasn't as bad as Reservoir Dogs uh, Reservoir Dogs was almost in this list um, but it, it to be honest with you there wouldn't be a Pulp Fiction if it wasn't for if it wasn't for Reservoir Dogs mm-hmm. but in terms of sheer entertainment in terms of star power in terms of, of writing and fucking soundtrack again and this is one of those copied soundtracks if you will in the sense that just took all the cool music that yeah. he appreciated yeah. and he just worked it into the soundtrack. So that's awesome. <clears throat> now, number two, I, re- I I wish I had time to research this, but I believe this is just on the cuff of um, the 90s. And this is The Matrix. This might be quite controversial, actually. Um, but I remember all the, the hype around this film and the fucking crazy... Um, shenanigans on it. In fact, I'm gonna quickly check if this is. It is. Uh, it is 90s. It's 99. Yeah, I thought so. Like 99. It's another one of those great films in terms of like the action sequences, 
And um, the soundtrack, again, I love the soundtrack on this. And um, last but not least, <clears throat> uh, another Will Smith film. Only this time it's Bad Boys, way before he started saving the world. <laughs> and um, his, his one line is, this was one of the Micah Bay films that took a chance. Yeah, they are, 99. Um, it, that took a chance on the new talent because Will Smith and Martin Locke, they were TV stars. No one, and also they were black. Nobody would give them the time and space that Michael Bay did. So I tip my head hat to him to that. And it has all the typical uh, Michael Bay um, shitty things that he does. Um, but it's it's just a fun movie and it's just action packed and it it makes my penis pump. <laughs> I, I was I was going to say exactly the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm getting number three next year. How oh, has it been confirmed now? Yeah, confirmed. Oh, yeah, nice. oh, wow. we'll see. Okay. A lot of people say because their age they shouldn't do it. Fuck you. Yeah, nah, just you could obviously they're not that old man like. Uh, right. Fuck it, they can make another Rocky. Yeah, they can do this exactly. Um, right, Belmont, let's go with it. Nice, All right. nice one, McCabe. Mm-hmm. Number five, the Fifth Element. <laughs> That's yeah. one I've forgotten. Yeah. Wow, Before Luke Besson starts smoking crack time. and created Lucy. My uncle was in this movie. Oh, this movie. Yeah. What? Yeah, my what? uncle was in this movie. Really? Yep, yep. There's a bit when the bomb's going off and they're running around the corner. My uncle yep. is the black bold guy. <laughs> hey, also that's it now. Fame. That's it. I'm putting it on later. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting it on. I'm going to, I'm going to, there's his uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Evans made a cameo appearance where he can't work a gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amelia Ovovich in that bandage outfit. Oh, dude. Oh, mate. Right. Hmm. <laughs> I'll just let that sink in. Corbin Dallas. But yeah, Corbin Dallas. Hey, Bruce yeah. Willis was fantastic in this film. There's some great. There's a great high flying car chase and stuff. Some good action <laughs> scenes. Some well, of it was a bit out there, but you can roll with it. Good story. It's just mm. a great film all around. Number four, Starship Troopers. I've never oh, seen. I've oh, never watched it. Oh my I've never lord! It. I just wet myself. <laughs> You've never Iconic. seen it. No, I've never Who's watched it. I've never watched Iconic. it. All right, write this down, Kenny, because it's one of the best sci-fi films you can ever watch. Starship Troopers, down. It's hardcore. Yeah, a good bug is a dead bug. But just watch this one. Yeah. Do not watch two or three. Don't. Okay. No, just don't. watch this one and leave it alone. I probably will. What, watch two and three? Yep, because I yeah, like... Yeah, but my... you, like, you like the garbage films and sci-fi late at night, though. I've seen it. Oh, as well. Okay, fair enough. Uh, what's there to say about Starship Troopers? Do... I can't recommend it anymore. It's one of the best B films ever made. Yeah. Uh, number three, Jumanji. Oh, why did I Great why film. did I forget this man? Yeah, it's. I, do you know what? I found it in Sainsbury's last week for three pounds, and I thought I'm having that. Yes. And my, mm-hmm. I, I let my niece watch it. She watched it three times <laughs> in the same I day. So wanted that game board. Yes. Game what board. did they ever make I, it? No. Oh, how did they, they not? Could I you imagine so how much that, that, that would sell out, mate? That was amazing. Just Bro, the, antique, now. the antique look of it. The, mm. the antique look it's of it, the pieces looked really oh, cool, the animals. It was amazing. And just remember that drum beat when it's... And the like, globe in the middle mm. that just used to... Ah, oh, what a yeah. fucking film. What a great film that is. Right, number two, Demolition Man, like I said, I moved it over. And number one, Terminator 2. Mm. I don't know what else can actually be said about Terminator 2, to be honest with you. It says itself, mate. Mm-hmm. The, the, Linda Hamilton got... There, there was like a film in between the original and number two, because she is jacked in this one. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I, it's, it's always ticked me off about Terminator, because obviously first one, second one, iconic, can't be touched. Yep. And as much as you want the franchise to go on, even now you look at it and you just think, why did you do it? Well, because Why did you make all these sequels that it? just embarrassed themselves? You know what I mean? Yeah, Hollywood can't leave it alone. Number three, I really did not like. Uh, what was the other one? Salvation. Salvation. I thought Salvation I'll was just... okay for what it yeah, was. Yeah, Salvation's right. I'll give that a pass. I, I, I personally would have liked to have seen Christian Bale carry on. Yeah. I didn't mind him doing it, to be honest with you. I thought he was brilliant. The latest freaking thing is just was just a train wreck. Genesis. Not, I I'm, hate... I'm, I'm not Do you know what? Train wreck. I haven't watched it. Who hasn't seen it here? I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. I, won't, I won't say anything, but it's it's got. I, I thought it was really dumb. It just story. ruined it, didn't it? It, it, it kind of just fucked everything killed. else up and just yeah. killed it. Unnecessary. But yeah, that that was the pinnacle of the Terminator franchise, was the second, and I still say it's the best sequel ever. Mm. Yeah. 
All right. Dave, roll with it. Okie dokie. Uh, right. In reverse order. Number five. Luke Besson Classic. Leon. Oh, yes. Oh. Someone said it. Someone said it. I was looking wow. at this. JJ Reno, Gary Ullman, <laughs> Natalie, young Natalie Portman. Enough said. Again, said again steroids. That's just, that's just the only way I can. Gary Oldman is just the greatest thing to come out of Britain in terms of. <laughs> he, he, he's just solid in acting. He's solid. Everything Gary Oldman does is just. This, this, he's, he's brilliant. He's gold. Natalie yeah, Portman, yeah, yeah. a young girl. Oh, it's just wrong to look at it, but I've got an infatuation with Natalie Portman. It's just what a film! What a film! Well, it's okay now. She's legal age. We should really. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's, you know it's the same with Armani, stuff. freaking Grange. If you know what I mean from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> I can't watch the films anymore. I just feel, feel dirty. Yeah. Number four. <laughs> Point Break. Mm. Nice. Mm. Again, another film that just for, for me was just parachuting, surfing, surf the biggest wave, jump over the fence, shoot a guy. <laughs> <laughs> we get you know guy, guy, when when Gary Bushy actually looked normal. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now it's just he just crazy. he looks worse than freaking Sylvester Stallone's mum. Oh. Um, you know, in terms of plastic surgery, I just, oh, what a mess. Yeah, but good. yeah, Point Break was just phenomenal. No, if no one's ever seen that film, you, you, you know, you better cut your limb off to go and get it. Uh, number three, this a lot of people would probably think oh, I haven't seen that because I, do you know what amount of people I say to them about this film and they go, I've never seen it. Sure, the I Last mean. of the Mohicans. Yeah, I've never seen it. Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis, again, soundtrack is just, oh, there's, there's bits in that film when the music starts playing. Uh, I think it was based in 19, 1757. I think it was based in the French French uh, Revolution type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it's, it's just compelling. It's about a guy that gets basically adopted by Indians. He grows up and then you've got these, the... Um, British forces type of thing and they're basically going into France to take it over and this guy this Indian basically takes this commander's daughters and he swears to protect them but they're basically being stalked by a tribe of Indians it's fucking brilliant honestly it's, it's just outstanding number two Brandon Lee the Crow Ooh. Oh yes, another one I've forgotten. As what? What a film? Yeah, it's yeah, to take the DVD out. It's sad. It's a, yeah, in, in some way, the way the way it ended, and still to this day, I just nah, it's one of them, and it? it's just yeah, nah. it was... conspiracy. <laughs> what was it? it was, they were supposed to be emptying bullets. Yeah, uh, there was live rounds put in a gun, wasn't it? The yeah, there was live rounds. Yeah. yeah, messed up. Um, what a film. Fantastic. Well, that's the inspiration for Sting's Crow character later yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And that's right. That's exactly why I picked it because I became I... obsessed with Sting. Because of the Crow. From, from yeah. that moment. It just, you know what I mean? The baseball bat you, that, he, that you, he borrowed off you, Belmont. <laughs> yeah. I'm still waiting for um, it. You know, the long, long black trench coat, the face paint. The, the the long hair before he recede before the recedence started. It, it changed the game, didn't it? You know that film for me basically it it also took wrestling to another level. Mm. Because Sting was the was the was the man, wasn't he? You know what I mean? There was nothing like him. Well, it was um, a mistake and, in that as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and the crow played a big part in that. Um, all I can say is what a film. And number one, Tim Robbins, Morgan Freeman, Shawshank Ooh. Redemption. Bang. Banger. Number one on IMDb for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because you can never get bored of it. 
and Morgan Freeman can come and sit at the bottom of my bed any time and tell me a bedtime story. (laughs) (laughs) What what a film. Story, powerful, you know, and I just, I, I I could easily put that on every day of the week and watch it, you know, and it's just, it's brilliant. It's, I can't say any more about it. It's, 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 wow. It's just, it's, what a film. It's just brilliant, isn't it? Um, Why can't we have films today like they were in the 80s and 90s? Be, well, because all the original and good ideas were back then, and now they're, they seem <laughs> obsessed with remaking stuff. Sounds like Vince McMahon, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's a um, show. Oh, by, by the way, <laughs> by the way, Morgan Freeman, right? If you haven't listened to this before, I was listening to Radio One, and they had Morgan Freeman reading out Justin Bieber's um, song. Yes. Yeah, yeah. mate. Yes. It was I'll so. Link that, please. It was so <coughs> funny. It was so funny. It was. <laughs> it was just the way he was like, "My mama don't like you." <laughs> <laughs> Have you and seen she him narrating that um, <laughs> selfie stick? Selfie stick. Oh, guy. yeah, there's two men. <laughs> yeah. Walk around if you can find stick. that, find it. Mate. Um, right, all right. I gotta give a rush on, so I gotta do mine. All right, so top five 90s. Home Alone 2 my, is one of my five. Again, Marv and what's his face? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Pesci, like, it's just too much. It's just too much. And when he gets electrocuted on the thing, like, oh, the amount of the laughter, skeleton. the amount of laughter, dude. Uh, I just yeah, and um, pigeon woman run Kevin and she just throws throws, <laughs> throws the seeds on, on him and the seeds the seed I don't, the, the birds I don't know where they're coming from they're coming from out of every orifice I don't understand where the birds came from and why they're coming like it's just too is yeah it's too much but it's just it's funny man and um come on girls you can really do the I love that bit when <laughs> get out of here you little pervert before I slap you <laughs> silly oh man love that. Um, number four, Dumb and Dumber. Man, this movie, yes. for me and my brother, again, just, oh man, it, I know every word to this movie from start to finish. That's how much I love this movie. One of my favourite comedy movies of the 90s. Just, yeah, it's Jeff Daniels and, and, and Jim Carrey, man, just, yeah. Oh, just great. Oh my god, it's just like when the, he's at the petrol station and he's getting her number and he's like, okay, it's uh, 555975. She's like, oh, that's my old number. For God's sake, just give me the goddamn number. <laughs> are, they, are they your skis? Yeah. <laughs> Both of them? Yeah, and the, the iconic tongue, tongue, um, frozen tongue. Oh, look in the ice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, love it. Number three, Boys in the Hood. Do you know what? I haven't I, seen I, it. I, I, good, I, uh, good stuff. Whoa, 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 whoa. That whoa, was teetering. Bro, you haven't seen it, mate. You've never no, seen you it. Mate, you haven't seen Starship Troopers. Don't give me that. True. <laughs> all right, all right. Eye for an eye. True. Um, but, mate, yeah, you need to see this because Morris Chestnut, right? Ice Cube. Dude, these guys go fucking in Cuba. Uh, amazing. Cuba mm-hmm. good in. Dude, right, this movie is so, is so good, man. So good. I'll, I'll look it up. I, I, it's been on radar. The way Lawrence Fishburne was amazing. Oh, it? Lawrence Fishburne in this as his dad was just so, yeah. a beast. The way Ricky gets <clears throat> shot by the shotgun, fuck off, mate. That just messed me up. Like it was so graphic and so horrible. Like proper blew his chest out, didn't it? Mate, yeah, man. I need, yeah. Anyway, um, that's why. Number two, Matrix. Obvious reasons. Um. Being in secondary school and this movie coming out, yeah, man, huge, huge, and big. Keanu Reeves brought it back, mate. Like that's it. Mm. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, and my number one, to this day, one of the only movies that has made me tear up, um, or the first movie to make me tear up, I should say, is Forrest Gump. Oh. Yeah. Oh, really? I Jenny. I love this movie. I absolutely love this movie from start to finish. Everything about this movie, just the the range from start to finish, the era, the things he goes, he, he comes up with, you know, he, he goes up against with the, from the whole table tennis thing to being in the army, then Lieutenant Dane, and then Jenny and <laughs> Lieutenant Dane. Like, Lieutenant Dane, you like, got no legs. <laughs> 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 it's just like. Like my mama, I just love, I just love it, and it's Ron Forrest from when he's running as a kid, and the bri- the Stone Cold Steve Austin leg braces just bust off his legs, and it's like <laughs> shit, like you know. Oh, it's a perfect man. story, isn't it? Perfect from, story. From from start to finish, it's about boy boy grow, boy growing up into a man, and it's just but a normal what what a normal person would do. They look after their mum. The the dude the soundtrack. It's, it's brilliant. The soundtrack, fucking um, oh I can't remember who's is it is it Jace is it. 
Jackson Brown um, running on yeah. empty. Oh yeah. Yeah. my god, when he's running and he's got the fucking the the Bray Wyatt beard going on, and he's just like, oh that song. And then you got um, I think it's Fleetwood Mac. You can go your own way. Yeah. Uh, and then you got Leonard. How uh, is it? Um, Leonard, Leonard Skinner. Skinner. When um, Jenny's fucking taking the drugs. Oh, yes. Just everything about it, man. It just it just it hit me, man. It hit me. Um, and I think one of the only other the only other movie to make me cry after that was Seven Pounds. But yeah, that's 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 that. That killed me. That messed me up, mate. That messed me up. I was like, wait, where is this guy? I was like, wait, what's this guy doing? I remember my mate going, like, I said to my mate, dude, are you crying? He goes, dude, are you crying? I was like, wait, what? What's happening to me? What's happening? I I remember going to see that movie with my um, sister. We we were meant to go and see something else. I can't remember what, but they didn't have tickets for us. We went to see Seven Pounds. And I remember, I, I didn't cry, but I remember when, when the lights came up at the end, my sister had mascara, like, completely down her face. It was, I, 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 was, I was laughing at her. I didn't, I, was, I couldn't help but laugh. Oh, like, no, don't laugh. It's really sad. Right, guys, we're close to the end of the show. My missus handed me this piece of paper. The top, her top 80s movies were The Little Mermaid, um, <laughs> Pet Cemetery, <laughs> yeah, um, The Goonies, I, yeah. Poltergeist. Step into the Good light, film. Caroline! <laughs> a, bit, a, bit, a bit traumatic, Poltergeist, was for oh, me, man. because when they made Poltergeist, the girl that played, the, the person that played the little girl in the film, she oh, yeah. died of oh, yeah, unforeseeable rich. circumstances, didn't yeah. she? Oh. Yeah. It was weird, like, it's um, kind of messed her up. My, oh, the last one on hers is Pound Puppies and the Legend of Big Poor. <laughs> Ace. She loved, Damn, how did I dude, forget that? She loves that movie, mate. Um, her nineties movies were Shawshank Redemption, Chip Redemption, Mrs. Doubtfire, um, <laughs> Forrest, <laughs> Forrest Gump, um, Edward Scissorhands. Um, she's a what? she's a massive oh, she's a oh, massive yeah. Tim Burton fan. She is, um, and Disney's Tarzan. Um, her, hmm. her mate, Rosie Roberts, got to give a shout out to Rosie. Face Off is her 90s. Face Off. Um, I forget Face Off. What's that mean with these lists? Miss Doubtfire, Bad Boys, Fight Club, um, and, oh, yeah, and Fight Club. Pulp Fiction. Her 80s is Willow, um, Empire Strikes Back, um, Return of the Jedi, Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, and Beverly Hills Cop, the first one. Um, oh. And. Um, my missus best mate also Polly Jenner shout out to Paul's um, her 90s is Braveheart um, Romeo and Juliet uh, yeah Romeo and Juliet that song by Desiree Kissing You is going to be the song at our wedding that my missus is going to walk down to so yeah um, also Train Spotting and mm-hmm. Cruel Intentions um, oh Cruel Intentions was awesome and she said uh, American History X Oh, yes. oh, Edward Norton. Oh, <laughs> I'm feeling long. Her, oh, what a... Her, why have you done this to me? Her 80s was E.T., um, The Golden mm-hmm. Child, uh, Golden Child. Uh, Legend, uh, Lost Boys, and Coming to America. Right, guys, on quick shout-outs, honourable mentions, right? Uh, two each, guys, okay? Um, Cookie, two honourable mentions, mate. Uh, the Untouchables, Robert De Niro's Al Capone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because it's shit, but I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> Robin, Rob, Batman and Robin. You're not gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, uh, Dawson. Um, I'm, I've got a whole list here, but I'll just pick two. I'll go for um, Three Amigos, oh, yeah. Steve Martin, and um, let's go for um, Drop Dead Fred. I'm a huge Rich Mail fan. <laughs> yes. I mean, come on, it's just, it's just a whole 90-minute movie about snot and farts and imaginary friends. Love those the kids. Uh, McCabe. Um, two uh, from each uh, decade. Uh, yeah, uh, just just two, just two. Oh shit! Uh, well, one is Akira. Yeah. And, oh yes. Uh, Akira, nice. Oh fuck it. The other one, um, the other one, I'll have Basil the Great Mouse Detective. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Um. Belmont. Uh, Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. Mate, and... we need to talk after this shit. I'm not even gonna. Yeah. We need to... No, we need to... no, not after, but later. I'll talk to you later. We're gonna talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. right? And the other one, planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> John Candy. Oh, John Candy and oh, what, what a great. Oh, Uncle was. Buck. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Uncle Buck. Um, Cookie, have you said yours? Your two. I said mine. You said your two. Um, right. Uh, Gillum. 
I think we've set a trend here on anime because I was I was always going to go with Vampire Hunter D. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. Nice, yeah. And the second one is Steve Martin classic, The Man with Two Brains. Woo! <laughs> all right. Um, all right. My two is going to be um, oh shit, this has made it hard. Uh, my two is going to be uh, Weird Science. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Weird science. So hot nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> and Belmont, you know I have to mention this. Fucking Fist of the North Star, mate. The animated. Oh mate. Oh <laughs> shit. Wait, 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 you, you've got to. You've got to do an anime show. Dude, listen. The Kitty. anime show. All right. Listen. The next retro round table. Fucking anime. Me. You. Um. I know Cookie doesn't like anime. Um. So. Um. Cookie, you can. You can decide. You know, we'll do we'll do a retro round table extra. Me, Gillum, Belmont, yeah. anyone else who wants to do anime, we'll fucking put it out there. Um, I'm just gonna do quick shout outs. Remember the Titans, fucking Aladdin, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, oh, Back to the Future, yes. Casino, Goodfellas, Fast Time at Regiment High, <laughs> Set It Off, fucking Candyman, The Mask, Con Air, The Beach, fucking hell. Right, that's the end of the show, people. <laughs> Belmont, where can they find you? On the Twitter. Uh, I'm being chased on by Lucha Underground fans at Jerks2001 currently. Okay. Gillum, where can they find you? You can get me at, at Butcher69 on a Twitter machine. All right. Um, all right, McCaber, where can we find you? I know you've got two now. I've always had two. Oh, um, you can have the normal one. Um, your fans can have the normal one. That is Fox What? What? Th, uh, T-H-E-F-O-X-W-O-T-W-O-T. All right. Dawson. Yep, top rope elbow, that's me. Cookie. At the um, Cook on the Twitter. And you can find us at Sunday Segway, Segway Spot, S E G U E, and also find me at Kenny Killer. Next Retro Roundtable Extra will, will be on anime, and the next Retro Roundtable next month will be, or well, should be, I believe, King of the Ring 94. Um, How much is that guy wear? <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, people, don't you miss it, please. Uh, make sure you check us out next month, brother.